Vision in progress. Hello, 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 everybody. Hi and welcome. Welcome to this, oh, this juicy free workshop um, hosted by the Pranic Family. So that's pranicfamily.com. Thank you so much for being here. If you are watching live, uh, we will be having uh, some questions uh, midway through. Uh, and if you're watching the replay as well, do feel welcome to comment, to share, to let us know how you find the wonderful energy and information that we're bringing forth, because my name is Alice and we are going to be talking about prana and the divine feminine. Ooh, so I don't know about anyone else, but I just get, I get goosebumps and shivers up my spine when I say that. So um, I want to give a warm welcome to everybody and um, just outline what the next space of time with me here is going to look like. So we're going to be talking about three main things. So firstly, what is prana? Secondly, how does that connect with the divine feminine energy? That is pretty much a buzzword right now, isn't it? Everyone is talking about the divine feminine rising. So we're going to talk about that and about how prana and divine feminine dance together. But we're also going to be looking at a third point, which is shadow work as well, because that is one of the um, topics that I love to uh, coach people on, uh, coach people through um, and, uh, and work with. And it relates so powerfully to how we uh, navigate energy, how we cultivate energy, how we work with um, all version of energy that is out there. So um, I'm very excited. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, prana. So we can we can exchange that word with many different things, you know, prana, chi, life force. What is it? It is energy, right? And me personally, and I'm going to be sharing my interpretation of a lot of things. And I, I really encourage anyone that is watching to take what resonates for you. And if anything doesn't resonate, that's okay. Leave the rest because we are all unique, right? We are all unique with unique interpretations, understandings, and connections to different things. But prana, let's start there. Okay. So prana is this life force energy. Everything is energy right? Everything is energy. Like you sat across the camera watching this on whatever device you are watching that, that is, you are energy. The device is energy. This streaming and getting to you, right? That is traveling energetically, right? And there are multiple layers of that. If you tuned in last week, you would have heard Fabi talking about how to cultivate um, that energy. And, um, and he spoke a little bit more about that, but I'm going to take a slightly different angle here. And I'm going to talk about the layering because everything that is around us, that we see, that we experience, that is light, that is sound, that is energy being translated by our physical selves. Our eyes translate energy into sight, into color, into images. Right? Our ears translate vibration, translate energy into sound. And that's how you can hear me, right? So this is all energy and this is all then prana, right? According to me anyway. Um, but why I really love to start here is because when we begin to look at everything and everyone as energy, we start to realize that nothing is set in stone, set in its way. Nothing is finite or absolute there is always you know um motion and movement and there is always a way to uh manipulate the energy in a positive way so i know that word can be a little bit hmm, manipulate it, it can be a bit of an interesting word for people but i mean it in the most purest of sense because that is what we are doing day in day out to move your leg forward to take a step forward you are manipulating energy right you are moving energy to move your body right? So there are multiple layers of energetic fields. And you may know this because you may have uh, experienced energetical healing, right? You may uh, practice that yourself, right? You may offer that yourself. You may know that if you put your hands together like this, you know, and you start to just move your hands forward and backwards and forward and backwards, you can start to feel and energy start to build, you can start to feel something as though it's appearing, but it's invisible to our sight, right? You might start to feel a building of energy in your core. I know when I do live videos like this, I have a lot of, um, oh, I have a lot of energy that builds through and it's wonderful. I'm just gonna 
Apologies if you're just joining. I am just going to mute a few people here. Thank you so much. We will be taking questions though afterwards. So if you have questions, I would love to hear them. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we have multiple layers and it goes from the purest and the lightest, as in less dense form of energy, which is what I call prana. So when we are out and about, when we're gazing up at the sun, those there is invisible energy coming straight through into our eyes, into the chalices of our eyes, because the pupils, they're holes, right? So they that enters into the chalice of our eyes, and then we translate that energy. But then we also have an emotional body, we have a mental body, and we have the physical body. And the physical body is still, once again, prana, it's still energy. It's just light that is very densely compact together. So with that being said, with that foundation laid out there, I'm actually gonna jump to topic number three first before I go back to the divine feminine. Because when we look at physical layer, emotional layer, mental layer of our light body, we may experience from time to time aches, we may experience pains, we may experience blockages, right? Beliefs, patterns, things like that, that aren't necessarily serving us, right? But the beauty, the beauty of that, because this is where working with energy and actually um, healing any wounds, any shadows will come in is because there is simply a blockage. There is simply um, energy wants to flow and we've stopped it flowing somewhere. So we can work on any layer of the body to actually heal and align ourselves to connect with pure bliss, pure abundance, pure joy, connect with one another in that way, create our experience in that way. So whenever we move our body, we're moving prana. Whenever we sit and gaze at the sun, we're receiving prana. Whenever we are nourishing ourselves, be it with food, with water, with breath, we're moving and translating prana, okay? Now, how does this relate to the divine feminine energy? There is a wonderful, beautiful lady on this call who I have the honor every Tuesday in the pranic family group, there are subgroups. So we have a, a wonderful family of brothers and sisters who all have very wonderful and unique skill sets and we all support and teach each other. And on Tuesdays, we have Tantra Tuesdays. And what I love is I have a wonderful lady on this call called Monica. And sorry, I'm just name dropping you there, darling. <laughs> um, and her and I, we were literally talking about this masculine and feminine energy yesterday in our sensuality practice that we shared with the group. Now, the feminine energy, her nature is to flow, is to swirl, is to is to receive her nature is to receive right when we are in balance when we are in flow the feminine energy she nourishes she heals she nurtures she receives right that's where all the abundance that we actually want to um achieve in life you know we have to be able to uh, not block our energy fields so that we can just continue to receive it because we never actually are stopping anything coming in like and when i say anything, I mean, the good stuff that people always want to manifest, right? Because the feminine energy within you is naturally drinking it in anyway, right? That's her natural state. I personally always look at the sky and the earth for masculine and feminine in a way of explaining, um, in a way of like easily explaining to people um, how to uh, how to connect here because the feminine energy is like the earth you know she rises up she wants to rise up this wonderful channel of light which is you right she wants to rise up she wants to flow she wants to spiral and she wants to be passionate in so doing sensual in so doing and the masculine energy and she is love right she is pure love embodied and the masculine energy you know I always look up to the sky right and the higher chakras um, although there is masculine and feminine in every part of our body, in every cell, in every molecule of energy, there is always masculine and feminine because there is positive and negative, like a battery, right? Giving and receiving. There's always going to be the equal and opposites because that is the world that we live in, the universe that we live in. 
Okay. So I always look to the sky to, um, to see that masculine energy. And I sometimes actually usually associate prana with more of a masculine energy because of the lightness of the form, the freedom that it offers, right? Because that is what prana is. That is what divine masculine is to me, right? And like I say, you may have a different interpretation. But what I love about the masculine and feminine energies is that the masculine energy wants to bring freedom through, but he also is that electricity, right? He brings things into focus, into order, right? Into structure as well. You know, he brings it down and he is the I of the I am, right? He's the individuality of you, of me. Me appearing in this way is a masculine trait because the feminine is to be collective and connected with all, flowing seamlessly through all things, right? So we start to see, we start to see how prana or how energy can be divided a little bit but then brought together again but can be divided into masculine and feminine energy right and in so doing we then have two holes uh, two halves of a whole right two equal and opposite complementary components right that is propelling you forth into being creating what you desire making it physical you know connecting with one another but maintaining your personality your individuality right so and I'm just going to look at my notes here as well, because I was listening, I was listening before this call and just receiving the guidance as to what wanted to be brought forth. So I'm just going to have a little look here, because when we, when we look at the flow of energy, it wants to flow both ways, up and down, out and in, contract and expand and contract and expand. And it wants to do that by nature. But how do we block that? right? How have we been blocking that? Because through time and space, especially the past few millennia, you know, we have been very much closing ourselves and blocking a lot of energy, right? Within and around by our thought patterns primarily, right? You know, when you feel really powerfully about something, you know, you feel really strongly about something, maybe it's a thought or a belief or a desire, right? We feel very strongly about something, but your reality doesn't look that way. That's actually really, really good because what it's showing you is that your true belief, your true nature, your true understanding of energy, which maybe hasn't yet consciously found its way into the mind, your true nature right, has a different belief connected in the mind. So there is a gap between what you are embodying, what we are embodying, and what we know to be true, what our divine source energy that is flowing through us, within us, creating us, because we are all source energy, embodied. Right? But when we experience contrast, when we feel passionately about something and we are experiencing in real life a different reality to what we know to be true, that then starts to show us where we have blocks in our energy field. And that could show up physically. It could show up mentally, emotionally. The emotions are the indicators as to whether we are in alignment with our truth or not, right? And that's where we start to delve into healing ourselves. And all healing is, is that we are already healed and we are already whole. We just have a different belief, which is blocking energy going to where it needs to and flowing smoothly. It's like if you have a stream or a river, there is a dam in the way, right? You know, someone's built a dam. It was ourselves. We built it ourselves. And, you know, we just have to allow the water to flow over and through and around. And eventually, you know, eventually that path will clear again, right? And things that we create for ourselves that may be in contrast start to ease and we start to find more flow more love and more union within right i could just go on talking <laughs> i could just go on talking about uh, about this type of stuff um i have no idea what the time is but um i don't know how long i've been talking but if anyone has any questions um up to right now please do feel welcome to you know to raise your hand to unmute or anything it's always wonderful to uh, to hear you um <laughs> But yeah, I could just carry on talking, really. <laughs> you still have more time. I, I still have more time. Oh, you're so great. Yeah. You're, on you, you're on 20 minutes now. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Anzu. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love about, um, so the reason why I'm coming live to you today is because, um, so in the Pranic family, right, in the Pranic family, which is our Telegram group, 
Um, we are all passionate about living, right? We're all passionate about living and that looks different for each person, right? You know, there are people in that group that wish to become breatharians, solitarians, right? And live solely off that pranic energy, reminding their body how to translate those energies and how to um, sustain and thrive in the most freest of ways. Right. And there are other people that that isn't their goal. Right. So it's wonderful because the main thing that we have in common is this love and the passion for living, the passion for being. Right. So I feel really honored that I'm here today because we, uh, each of us that are in there, the brothers and sisters that are in that space, that are in that group, you know, we all have a different skill set. You know, and we've all come together to offer coaching, right? And to offer an introduction to ourselves and an introduction to um, how we can help one another and how we can um, help you remember, you know, who you are, right? So I love that we're, I love that I am live here in this space because it also gives you a chance if you've never heard of Pranic Family, if you've never been on Telegram, if you've never been in the Facebook group, there is a Facebook group, by the way, which this is live streaming in. So we'll make sure that that is uh, tagged um, <laughs> in the description, wherever this goes, wherever the recording goes. Um, but have a look, right? Because what I can guarantee is that the one thing that I do know, or I feel that I do know for sure, is that everyone on some level has a passion for living and a passion for being, right? And our mind may not know that sometimes. Our mind may tell us something different because our mind is created by the patterns and the beliefs uh, that we've absorbed through space and time. And it's a logical, it's a logical space, right? As you know, it's a logical space. It wants to say one plus one equals two. And that's what it wants to do. And, you know, it wants to be a little bit black and white sometimes. But there is such a beauty in bringing the heart space and connecting heart to mind, connecting mind to womb, to connecting womb to throat, connecting all parts of our body that has been fragmented, right? Through experience and through beliefs. Because there is no separation, right? Between one and all. I am you and you are me. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're passionate about, you know, when we're in our true form and our true nature, we get passionate. I get passionate by hearing what you're passionate about. So I'm going to ask the question, what are you passionate about? Why are you here today? Are you here because you're supporting someone that you know in the Telegram group? Are you here because you just love learning new things? Why are you here? I'm going to ask the question to everyone that is live right now. And if you want to share, you can. If you don't, that's okay as well. But why are you here? Why are you watching this live? Does anyone want to share? Putting people on the spot. I just love hearing new uh, perspectives, uh, new ways of uh, coming to to the same middle in a way <laughs> from different perspectives. That is so uh, so uh, nourishing to me and uh, very inspirational. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, Monica. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's beautiful when we get to when we get to connect with one another, we really actually start to um, learn who we are, right? We start to learn more who we are. So, you know, you may not be watching this because you really desire coaching, but you may be watching this because your interest or curiosity peaked and you may find something completely different. So I'm just going to say that do you feel I'm going to, and I'm going to, I'm going to plug the pranic family here. I'm going to say, have a look at pranicfamily.com. Have a look at the Facebook group. Right? Because you may find something that you weren't expecting that you actually really, really desire to, you know, connect with. But I'm going to just move it right back into, uh, oh, does anyone else want to share, by the way, before I kind of move on to the next part? Okay, thank you so much, Renzo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next part. And I wanted to show you, I want to show you something. Okay, so um, we said before, we said at the very, very start that, you know, there are different layers. Prana can be translated in many different ways. You know, prana is energy, right? You know, the way that we allow it to move, when we allow energy to move, whether that's through moving your body, whether that's through um, exercising your mind, whether that's through letting your emotions flow, whether that is going outside for a walk and connecting, you know, 
when we allow prana to move, that's when we actually find our wholeness, right? That's when we find our sense of center, of being, of, uh, of love, right? Now, we said that everything is energy though. So we have a physical layer, but we also have a mental layer, right? So the way that I personally work with people is very much through, um, I do a lot of um, spiritual healing, right? So that's working with the light form in its lightest lightest way but then it moves through the mental the emotional the physical right dependent on each individual right depend on each individual and how I connect with them whenever I'm in a one-to-one whenever I'm just out on the street whatever whatever it is you know we're going to have a different approach with different people depending on what it is that they need so I want to just do a little exercise here where um, we're going to just do something really really physical first Okay, we're going to just do something really physical. So you're going to get your hands here. I invite you to join me. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, it'd be wonderful. I'm going to take off my rings if I can. Okay. Okay. You're just going to get your hands here. Okay. You're going to get your hands. You're going to rub them together. Okay. This is very normal. You're used to touching your hands in this way. It's very kind of a blase approach of connecting with your hands. Okay. Now, once you've, you know, just rubbed your hands together, once you've kind of just done that, right, just hold them apart just for a moment and close your eyes. And what you're going to do is you're going to move your hands really slowly, really slowly. You're going to move them closer and closer together. And as you do so, and when I say really slowly, goodness, I mean like very slow. You're not even going to let them touch but you're gonna breathe deeply and just feel, feel the heat, feel the pressure within the space of your hands. Don't let them touch together if possible when you're doing this, but just keep moving them closer and closer. And when you feel like they're really quite close together, open your eyes. And just look at where they are and bring your attention, bring your mind, bring your focus to the tip of any of your fingers. Choose one of your fingers on one of your hands. I'm going to choose the middle finger of my right hand. Bring your attention and your focus there. Keep them where they are, but bring your attention and your focus there. And now you're going to really slowly, and you're going to watch your finger as you're doing this, bring it really slowly to touch the other hand really gently, really slowly. So it's barely even applying any pressure. How many people could feel the space, the energy build within their hands before they touched? How many people are able to? Just feel the slight sensation of what it is to touch the very tip of your finger with another. Very gently, very purposefully, very intentionally. I personally find, and I don't know about you, I'd love to hear in in a moment, but I personally find that when I get to a certain point, my other finger automatically goes to join it. It automatically goes to move towards and join it. So as I was moving this hand here and here, the middle finger of my left hand then wanted to touch the middle finger of my right. And it did it on its own without me actually even doing that. That may not happen for you, but for me, it does. And the purpose of this exercise is just to notice, just to really feel and connect. You can even just move your fingertips around gently, just barely even touching one another. And the reason I ask you to do this is simply just to honor and notice the sanctity, the beauty that is held in just a part of your body that actually is fully engaged all of all of the time. It's always touching, feeling, receiving energy, connecting with things. And we don't even realize we're just very quick to, you know, we're very quick to pick something up. We're very quick to, you know, to do this with our hands. But actually to really connect with it, we realize that the 
amazingness, the ingenuity of what our body actually is. Now that's just on a physical level. If we've ever had any aches or pains, we automatically wanna move our hand to where we're feeling pain because like my finger did here, and you'll have seen that in the camera if you were watching, you can feel, sorry, feel welcome to kind of find yourself back here again. <laughs> um, but you'll have noticed on the camera that my finger, this finger did just touch this every now and then without me wanting to do that because the nature of energy is to connect, is to flow, right? Your breath always goes in, it always goes out. You know, we don't have to think about it, but the thoughts are what will normally be the main thing that will block the flow of energy. So we're gonna move into a, a little meditation, a little guided journey and I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't know what's going to come forth because I'm just going to let it move through me. So I've not pre-planned it. I've not thought about it because the point of what I want to bring forth here when I talk about the divine feminine energy is that she is intuitive and she trusts, she has faith. And a lot of that is missing in today's world. We've got so many reasons to not trust, not have faith, right? But any practice where you can start to trust yourself. And that actually is just a very easy one to do because you're trusting that you're going to be gentle with your hands, right? But, so I'm going to bring through just a little guided meditation for you here. And it's only going to be short because I don't want it to, you know, be too much here. And we're just going to do a, a little dance, I think, of masculine and feminine energy within. Because when we go to the layer beneath the mental body. We can, allow, we can allow the mental body to be calm and we can reweave things, right? We can make really divine connections. So if you're ready, and if no one has any questions uh, for right now, then take a moment just to close your eyes, find yourself in a comfortable position. Sit down, be comfy, lay down if you like to lay down. Hmm. I can see some people on camera, that energy is already flowing because they're yawning <laughs> a little bit. I know for me, whenever I like, whenever I'm about to go into a meditation or something like that, I do, I have like a bit of a, oh, a bit of a yawn, release, a, release some old energy. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right, beautiful. So we're sat or we're laid down, our eyes are closed. And just place, you're gonna place your hands in your lap, but you're going to have the left hand recording up and the right hand over the top. So they're going to look like this. Okay. So you're just going to play, uh, lay them just in your lap. You may even find that you move them a little bit just to get them comfy. They may be like this rather than, you know, 180. They may just be like this, but you're just going to Combine them, connect them, and lay them in your lap. Now, whenever I say lay them in your lap, really what that is doing is you're moving that to your sacral chakra. You're moving those hands to the, to the root chakra, the sacral chakra of where they're laying. And that's good because now what you're gonna be doing without realizing it is because your hands are there, and as my friend says, they're extensions of the heart. You're bringing your heart down to that space. So the energy is gonna be cultivating there just for a moment. So just rest your hands in your lap. And we're just gonna slow the breathing down just a little bit. You're gonna breathe in through your nose. Letting that breath go deep and long. And whenever you feel like you've finished breathing in, you're just going to hold that breath just for a moment before exhaling it gently, smoothly, out through your nose again. We're going to do that a few more times, just breathing in gently through the nose. And you'll feel and notice that air moving down the throat, into the heart. But actually take that breath on your inhale, take it down to where your hands are laying. And on the exhale, slowly release.
and do that one more time where you're purposefully slowing that breath down. And taking the breath right down to your hands and your lap. You may feel that your hands are now starting to get warm. If they're not already. You may start to feel them tingling. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna place one of your hands on the top of your crown and the other hand, just keep it resting in your lap, on your womb space, on your pelvis. Regardless as to your anatomy, whether you are a man or a woman in anatomy, we have both male and female energies, which means that we all have an energetic womb. We're just gonna place one hand here upon your crown and one hand, just at your womb. Now, as you do so, just allow your hands to feel however they are gonna feel. And we're just gonna focus on the heart. The heart is that central point, that beautiful vortex of energy, that beautiful channel, which receives all divine light. It pumps through our body all energy. It is the hub of prana. It is a hub of everything because it sends energy up and it sends energy down in a beautiful figure of eight is the way that I see it. And you're just going to focus on your heart space. And you're going to focus on the energy within your heart like you're actually noticing the beat of your heart. If you could be stood inside your heart, you could feel the beat of your heart. And simultaneously as your heart, as it beats, energy, life force energy, blood runs up into your crown and runs down into your roots. But the blood is a physical level. So we're just gonna focus on the energy of it. So as you're breathing in and breathing out, receiving that nourishment from the breath, which is filling the heart, just bringing that light into that space, allow yourself to feel, to see, to know that there is energy going up to the hand on your head, and going down to the hand on your womb or into your pelvis at the same time. You may even choose, if you feel, to move the hand that is on your pelvis, you may choose to move it actually to the back of your spine, the very base of your spine. And the purpose of doing this is to connect above and below, connecting the top of your antenna, that wonderful spinal cord, that spinal column, connecting the masculine energy up at the top, the feminine energy down at the bottom and allowing them to rise and to fall as they wish to because the masculine energy wants to travel down, the feminine energy wants to travel up and they meet in the heart. They make love in the heart. And then you feel it everywhere else, of course. You may choose to start to move your hand a little bit, maybe to the back of your, the back of your head. Just trust where your hands are being drawn to go. All the while breathing deeply, breathing beautifully. Gently. And what you're doing is you're building trust. You're building trust with your intuition. You're building trust with your body, with yourself. This is something very simple, but at the same time, very powerful because of how gentle we're being, but how much we can feel in that stillness. Just gonna move your hands now both to your heart space. As we 
feel the beat of our hearts as we feel the rise and fall of our chest. Place your hands on your heart here. And just feel your whole body moving with your breath. In your mind's eye, in your mind's eye, you're gonna find yourself stood in the center of a big, beautiful heart, your big, beautiful heart. Allow your imagination, allow your mind's eye to place you, to shrink you in size and place you right in the middle of your heart, your beating heart. You see with your mind's eye, you see Streams of electricity running in the walls all around the deep red velvet walls of your heart space. Contract and expanding with every beat. You can see there are different chambers, different rooms in that heart. And you can feel a gentle vibration, a reverberation of energy of life force autonomously pulsing through it. You're gonna take a moment just to notice what condition your heart is in. Do the walls look healthy and whole or do you see that there are maybe some dark spots upon your heart, upon the walls there? As you look with your mind's eye, as you look at your hands of the little you stood inside your heart, you look at your hands and you see that they are glowing the most beautiful white. So bright, so powerful. Take a walk around your heart space, take a walk into the different chambers of your heart right now. How brightly lit up are they? How new and what condition are the walls in? If you feel, if you see that there are some dark spots on the walls of your heart, place your hands upon them and the light, the white bright light that is shining forth from your hands, let that connect. Let that connect and let the walls be healed. If you see there is a chamber that is a little bit darker than the others, perhaps you wish to light them up. With your hands, focus your energy into the chambers that need more light. Like you're connecting different plugs of electricity together. You're lighting more lamps. <laughs> you're plugging more lamps in. Light up the chambers of your heart. You turn to the first chamber just for a moment and you notice that there is a small being standing there. You didn't notice them before, but now you do. This is a small child. This is you. You from when you were an infant standing in that first chamber of your heart space. Look at them, smile at them. Look at how happy they are. Look at how they may be expressing themselves. Are they looking at you curiously? Are they running around playing? 
Are they happy? Or perhaps is there something bothering them? As you breathe deeply, you realize that your heart light is starting to glow brighter and your light from your hands is starting to get bolder. Bold, but still very gentle. And you kneel down in your heart space and you hold your hands out. And you invite your younger self, you invite the version of your inner child that has shown themselves today to you. Do they come straight away? Do they wait? Speak with them. Speak with them, see what they say. Do they need help with anything right now? Perhaps they need a, bit of, a little bit of your heart light. Perhaps they need a little bit of your love and nurturing. They come close to you and they look deep into your eyes. And they offer a small smile. Slowly reach out a hand and place it upon their heart space, their chest. and see their smile get broader, get wider. You can see the energy, the white, beautiful, loving energy of your hands. You can see that glowing and moving through the child in front of you. Like they're being illuminated in love. Like anything that was upsetting them is just being washed away. You lean your head forward just a little bit as they lean up to you and whisper something into your ear. Listen to them, hear them and whisper something back if it feels right. You hold your hands out again to this beautiful child and they take your hands and you stand up tall and you see that their light, their energy is vibrant. It's even more brighter than what it was when you first saw them. You look around the chambers of your heart and you realize that it is much brighter in here than it was before. Even if it was already very bright, it just seems more vibrant now than it was before more energized, more content. The young you looks at you once more and waves joyfully. They know it's time to start to come back into your physical form. And so they run off into another chamber of the heart, skipping along, playing. And you smile to yourself knowing that that happiness, that joy, that is your true nature. It was then and it is now. That playfulness is your true nature. When we are present in the now, when we are present with ourselves, Everything flows. And that's so beautiful. Bring your attention back to your breath, breathing slowly 
and deeply, intentionally. If your hands have moved from your heart, just move them back to your heart space right now and feel the pressure, the light, gentle pressure of your hands upon your chest. Start to gently move your physical body. Maybe you start to gently move your spine, move your head side to side. And whenever you're ready, find yourself, feel yourself coming back fully, whole, present in the now. Whenever you're ready, curl your lips into a smile and open your eyes. And welcome back. Oh, that was so much fun to do. Oh, thank you for the hearts. <laughs> oh. How are we all? <laughs> Very calm, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Wow. So, wow, that's the first time that, I've, um, that we've done that one before. So that was so much fun, so much fun to bring through. And I actually look forward to watching the replay so I can go through that myself. <laughs> Thank you all for being here with me in this moment. Now, for everyone that is live today on this Zoom call, there is the invitation for you, should you wish to have a 15 minute free coaching slot with me. If you wish to do that, I have space on Friday the 25th. I'm gonna say all the times in UTC time. So that would be from 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. on Friday, on Monday, 12 p.m. till 4 p.m., and on Tuesday, 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., all in UTC time. We will have a Calendly link for people to book in. I know we just need to do some uh, little shifts on the, on the website for that, but um, please feel welcome to reach out. Please feel welcome to connect with me. You can find us once again in the Pranic Family Telegram group on the Facebook page, right? Go to pranicfamily.com to actually um, get a free trial to the wonderful supportive group and the subgroups. You know, if you're interested in breath work in Tantra and juicing and uh, non-duality and, you know, there's so many different things and um, soulful expression and things like that. There is so much support and so much love in that space for you. Um, and feel welcome to connect with me as well on my personal social media. You can find me at Ascension to Love with Alice on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, right? And um, you can find me on my website at aliceheath.com. So there is a newsletter going out later today because there is a wonderful new shadow work course coming forth. Um, so do have a little look at that if it calls to you. And if you are interested in a one-to-one -one coaching slot, do know that you'll find it um, cheaper if you go via Pranic Family than what it is to book through my website. So that's always a wonderful incentive just to connect with our gorgeous Pranic Family for at least for that week's free trial. And we do have wonderful air feasts and dry, dry fast Sundays, which is where we're living beautifully off the Pranic energy. But Ranzi, Monica, is there anything I need to share with anyone before I stop the stream of this or anything that I, yeah, any other housekeeping that I, met, I might have missed or? Um, maybe just, um, I think any questions, I think we just have six minutes. Yeah, sure. If, does anyone have any questions? I can't see if, the, I can't see on the uh, Facebook page, I can't see any comments on that if people are watching via Facebook, but um, I can come back to those um, when I'm on social media. But does anyone live on the Zoom call, do you have any questions? Unmute yourself if you do. <laughs> Okay, I'll go ahead. Um, I just have one question. Um, just when you were talking about the feminine energy, um, the divine feminine, and how it gets blocked, we, it gets blocked by our thoughts and our thought patterns and so many things that happen in life. Um, is meditation the only 
way you find effective to to unblock? What a great question. Um, no, actually. So because there are so many multiple layers of our being, right? A lot of the blocks are now physically focused, right? You know, we hold a lot of uh, wounding and we convert a lot of energy uh, to be held in our in our hip space on a physical level, right? So, you know, sometimes, although meditation is always wonderful to actually kind of calm the mind, which helps with re uh, re establishing what you believe, right, and your truth, but a lot of uh, the energy has now kind of found its way uh, into the physical form. So actually doing massage can be really deeply healing, you know, receiving a massage, um, doing work with your, with your yoni space, right? Doing work on a sacred sexuality, sacred sensuality, moving the body to allow energy to flow on a physical level. Like yesterday, Monica and I did a wonderful uh, sensuality practice, which was so healing. And that was... Um, very physical it was vocal as well because we alchemize a lot through our sound through our voice because the throat is so intimately connected with the womb right so meditation is, is always wonderful but when we come to actual deep full alchemy it will need to go across different layers of the energy form as well so for some people there are physical practices that you'll need to do um, to really help unlock what has been stuck there right what we don't even know is there it's kind of like because there's different layers it's like you know finding which one is for each person but that's where that's where we book a one-to-one -one, right and we find out what it is for you based on what's showing up based on what's coming up right but yeah there are lots of physical practices as well um yeah does that answer your question or Yes, that answers my question. Thank you. Oh, good. You're welcome. But yeah, one final thing on that. Um, vocal, song, chanting, articulation, you know, allowing your, allowing your breath to be vocalized is huge. Allowing yourself to, ah, you know, just hmm, really just starting there, starting with your breath, right? You know, just take a moment, even if you are in meditation, that is adding a physical layer to it because this is the only chakra really that we uh, physically, um, you know, physically move forth uh, from, physically kind of create something out of on that level, right? On a on an audio level like that, it's very very alchemizing. So even to try that next time you're meditating as an introduction to doing some physical work, that would be a wonderful unlocker. Yeah. <laughs> Your smiling faces are so beautiful to see them just down the side of the screen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ramsey, for posting that as well. Yeah, I think that's um that's Fabi's link, but we can we can shift it for mine. I just we have to log in, we have to find the login details to change some of the slots. But yes, they have been posted, the timings have been posted. Feel welcome to just direct message me if there's any trouble booking that 15 minutes. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon. So much love. Oh, hearts to you as well. Thank you.